Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel, and we're going to continue our aldehyde and ketone lecture today. Today's focus is going to be Grignard reagents and hydride additions to aldehydes and ketones. So if you've gone through the alcohols chapter in your book, or you've looked at some of those lectures online that I've had, you will have probably been exposed to this because we typically learn it in alcohols. But aldehydes and ketones are the reactants we need to create those alcohols. And so we're going to take a look at hydride additions, which is a form of reduction in Grignard reagents on the channel, starting right now. Okay, so what we will do, we will start with Grignard reactions. The Grignard reaction is going to use a Grignard reagent, which will take the form R, M, G, and it can be a halide of some sort. So usually you'll see this as X, just a general representation. I most commonly gravitate towards Br, but you could certainly have chlorine or you could have iodide there as well. Okay, and the idea behind this is that you're setting up a nucleophilic R group. So let's just say CH3, for instance. What you are creating here is a very partial positive CH3 in comparison to the magnesium bromide complex. I'm sorry, a partial negative. My mistake, partial negative. Okay, compared to the uh, partial positive of the metal bromide complex here. Okay, so much so that a lot of times we can almost imagine this as a full negative charge on that methyl group. Okay, so carb anions, which are kind of rare in comparison to carbocations in organic chemistry. So how does this actually react with an aldehyde or a ketone? Well, for an aldehyde, you will use a Grignard reagent and end up with a secondary alcohol. So let's do a basic example where we have an aldehyde. And then we also have, let's use ethyl magnesium bromide. So we've got CH3, CH2, and then MGBR. Okay, now remember, if you've seen this before, the Grignard comes as the first reagent, and then we have to follow this up with an acidic workup. So we usually have H3O+. Plus. Okay, usually even just rinsing with water is good enough to get the job done in terms of forming the alcohol. So what's going to happen here when you subject the aldehyde to this, this CH2 group is the one that is partially negative. It's not the CH3. It's whatever is kind of coupled or directly next to the magnesium bromide. Okay, so this is going to be attracted as a nucleophile to the partial positive carbon. Okay, and that means that these pi electrons will go up to form a set of electrons with the oxygen. And so we're going to get this coupled four-membered tetrahedral intermediate state where now I've got the addition of the CH2CH3, right? So the ethyl group has come in. I still have a hydrogen here. And then this oxygen, right, would look like this. So the next step is that I would use the acid and the oxygen that just went into the formal charge of minus one is going to interact with this by taking an acidic proton and you get water in return. So this is going to the oxygen. That's a, let's do that arrow somewhere else. That's a little hard to see there. Okay, there we go. Those electrons are going back to the oxygen and you end up with an alcohol. So the end result of this is that I would have CH3, CH, right? Because this group right here is a CH, so I'm just condensing it, CH, and then CH2, CH3, and then this would have the alcohol, right? So an aldehyde is able to go to a secondary alcohol with a Grignard reactant. Now for a ketone, it's going to be very similar, but it's just going to be a tertiary alcohol that forms. So if I were to use the same set of reagents on let's say acetone here or using the official naming method to propanone okay number one would be the ethyl magnesium bromide and then number two i want to remember the water rinse 
or the, the acidic rinse that's aqueous, right? Separate steps. Okay, so this would come in and attack the carbon. These pi electrons would go up to the oxygen. Same premise, but this time it's not going to be a CH at the center of that tetrahedral state because we've already got another CH3 group, right? So we'll swing that CH3 group down here and the addition of the CH2, CH3. So this is the portionality from the Grignard that came in here. And then I've got the O minus. Okay, and a lot of people sometimes get confused. I don't always show this, but yes, this O minus is technically coupled with the MGBR because a lot of books will show that that you've got essentially this ionic complex going on there. So yes, that is there, and then it kind of dissipates as the the acidic uh, alcohol formation occurs. Okay, and so then we've got our H3O plus, and same thing, oxygen would come in, would take this, that would go there, and now what we would end up with is a tertiary alcohol that would look like this. So close to a T-butyl group, not quite, because of that ethyl group there. Right? And then we've got OH, and there is the final product. Okay, so that's the Grignard reaction. Aldehydes will go to secondary alcohols with whatever R group you add, and then for ketones, they will go to tertiary alcohols with whatever R group you add. And you just go through that process of creating the alcohol. Now, when we get to hydrides, this is going to be your general reductions. So we've already talked about a specialized reduction earlier in the aldehyde ketone course, which was DIBA. And that was something that was taking an ester partway into an aldehyde. Okay, so because we're looking at aldehydes and ketones, the main reagent that is typically used for aldehyde and ketone reduction is sodium borohydride. So Na. B H4. And what this structure does is it essentially will generate H minus ions, which we call a hydride ion. So that's why you saw in the title we're talking about hydride addition or hydride reactions with aldehydes and ketones. This, kind of like a Grignard, is a very good nucleophile and base. Okay. So it is going to be without a doubt attracted towards that partial positive carbon in the carbonyl that we find in the center of the aldehydes and the ketones. Okay? Now I will mention there is a stronger reagent, which is lithium aluminum hydride. This is typically going to be reserved for esters and ketones because those, I'm sorry, esters and carboxylic acids. Because esters and carboxylic acids experience a higher degree of oxidation and so therefore they need some stronger reducing agents, lithium aluminum hydride being one of them, in order to bring them down into alcohols. However, ketones and aldehydes can use the weaker reagent, sodium borohydride. So both of these would be acceptable reagents for generating hydrides, but practically speaking, you want to use the safer reagent, the one that's not as reactive if you don't need to, and so, so sodium borohydride would be the better choice there. Okay, Now, as far as aldehydes and ketones go, if I have an aldehyde and I subject it to this type of a reaction, the reaction is, number one, I would have whatever reducing agent I pick out. And like I said, we're going to use sodium borohydride in these examples. So NABH4, okay, and then number two is similar to a Grignard. We'll follow it up with an acidic workup. So what's going to happen is this will be responsible for generating H minus, and it's the H minus that will be attracted to or interact with the carbonyl. All right, so that's going to go to the oxygen. Very, very similar to the Grignard, almost identical, except it's not an R group. It's a hydrogen that we're adding, All right? So this carbon now has the oxygen opened up like this with the formal charge of minus one, and it had a hydrogen as an aldehyde and another hydrogen came in so this is really just a ch2 group and then we'll finish this off we'll use hydrogen oxygen hydrogen hydrogen right so we've got our acid 
This will come grab one of those protons. This will come back to get rid of the formal charge. And so what we end up with is CH3, CH2. Now where did that CH2 come from? That's just this written down, right? OH. And so what I end up with is a primary alcohol when I use hydride, right? So aldehyde using Grignard is a secondary alcohol and aldehyde using reduction using sodium borohydride or a hydride reagent is a primary alcohol because you get you add a hydrogen instead of an R group. Okay, and then to wrap this up because we're pretty well there, let's just take a look at the ketone real quick. You could probably expect if you can follow patterns well enough what's going to happen with the ketone. Okay, so we'll use our acetone again as a good example here. And so number one, we have the NABH4. And then number two, that's a horrible four. Let's go back and fix that four. Okay, number two, we've got the H3O plus. And so what we end up with here, hydride will come and approach the carbon in the carbonyl. Oxygen opens up. Give ourselves enough room here. Okay, the intermediate tetrahedral state that we've come to expect or know from these reactions. And now here we had a hydrogen come in, right? And we still have the CH3 here. So this is a CH group that will inevitably become a secondary alcohol. So if you watch the end of the mechanism here, you'll see exactly how that works and that should make sense. So this oxygen is going to come over, grab a hydrogen, right? These go back to get rid of the positive charge. And what we end up with is going to be CH3. And that middle one now is going to be a CH. So you can see that right here. Okay, CH3, and then attached to that carbon is the alcohol. This is a secondary alcohol that was created from a ketone using reduction. So head on over to chemcomplete.com. Check out the guides that we have available because that can help you with your work. Thank you, as always, for taking the time to view and learn with us. I know there's a lot of options out there. You can always check out our free spectroscopy course if you're having trouble in Orgo 2. And other than that, I don't have much else to say. So I will see you guys for the next lecture. Subscribe to stay up to date. And take care, everybody.